In this short video, I'd like to discuss a few updates you may have missed about Beam Therapeutics. I have covered this gene editing company previously on my channel. If you have not seen those videos, I leave a link here as well as in the description below. If you're unfamiliar with Beam Therapeutics, they are a gene editing company and they actually manage to edit single base pairs in the genome in order to correct for genetic diseases. And they do this through a process called base editing which is different than the more traditional CRISPR, Cas9 or Cas12 gene editing approach. That said, let's dive right into their exciting news. But also consider the following first. Although I have a PhD in biomedical engineering and over 15 years of working experience in the healthcare industry, I do not intend to give you investment advice. Please do your own research before making any investments. You are watching Health wealth. If you're new to this channel, welcome. If you're not, nice to have you back. So right off the bat in their May 11, 2021 uh, news release, and they have two elements that we like to dissect and discuss in more detail in the following. First off, they have really fantastic news on a novel liquid nanoparticle mRNA formulation that is capable of doing in vivo editing of liver cells and non-human primates and shows really high efficiency of 52%. Secondly, it looks like BEAM are ready to enter the clinic sometime soon because their BEAM 101 program for the treatment of sickle cell disease is going to uh, go through the IND phase which is the application for a new investigational drug to be submitted to the FDA in the second half of 2021. In a previous video, we had already looked at the various different means of how gene editing components can be delivered into various different cells. And as you can see here, one of the very promising technologies are actually liquid nanoparticles. As you can see, various topics start reoccurring because they are of fundamental importance to these types of treatments, such as liquid nanoparticles. So in fact, the May 11 press release about the high success rate of their liquid nanoparticles for in vivo treatments of liver cells undoubtedly are related to this February uh, press release where Beam Therapeutics announced the acquisition of Guide Therapeutics. There's no doubt in my mind that the fantastic news they shared in their recent press release must be related to the acquisition and the collaboration certainly that preceded the acquisition of Guide Therapeutics. According to the publicly released uh, terms of the acquisition, Beam Therapeutics paid in common stock initially a payment of 120 million and Guide Therapeutics stockholders will be eligible for an additional 320 million also payable in common stock when other certain milestones are met. So in total, once is all said and done, Beam will have paid roughly 440 million US dollars for the acquisition. And what did they get for it? Coincidentally, through the acquisition of Guide Therapeutics, Beam Therapeutics now own patented technology that allows the in vivo testing of thousands of chemically distinct nanoparticles in vivo. And this is done and achieved through tagging or to DNA barcode tagging of those nanoparticles, which are then injected into tissues. After mixtures of various nanoparticles with DNA tags have been injected into an animal, for example, the ability of these nanoparticles to have delivered the payload to specific cells can be achieved through deep sequencing. And the proprietary technology allows then for a 15,000 fold higher uh, data rate and delivery analysis than traditional experiments have been conducted so far. Bottom line, this allows for screening of highly targeted and very efficient liquid nanoparticles to deliver specific payloads into these cells. And it seems that this is precisely one of those results that Beam Therapeutics are now reporting a very high success rate on. Could this be coincidence? I don't think so. Data which Beam Therapeutics shared at the 24th American Society of Gene and Cell Therapy this year indicated that they have managed to increase 
the success rate of in vivo editing of non-human primate liver cells through their proprietary liquid nanoparticle formulations from initially 10% to 52%, which is believed to be sufficiently high for therapeutic gene editing applications in vivo. In addition to that, the liquid nanoparticle formulation was well tolerated and it is also stable at minus 20 degrees for upwards of 8 weeks. And most of all, in vivo applications for gene editing are far superior in comparison to ex vivo editing because the treatment can be delivered much faster without the need to extract cells from the patient, have them genetically modified, and then reinserted or reinjected into the patient. However, the downside of in vivo editing is that the treatment and the editing must be so precise that in fact that there are no off targets that could cause any other disease modifications or cancers, etc., to be introduced in the patient as part of unwanted side edits. But this is anyhow where beam therapeutics with their base editing are extremely precise in their gene edit applications and have certainly less to worry about in comparison to other companies utilizing the CRISPR-Cas system. So what does this mean for investors? It looks very much like Beam Therapeutics are getting ready to nominate their first candidate from their liver portfolio in the second half of 2021. And this should then be the starting block for the planning of phase one clinical trials. So let's now take a quick look at the second good news that was part of their press release. And here Beam said that they are on track to submit their IND for their Beam 101 study, which is for the treatment of beta thalassemia and sickle cell disease. And as you can clearly see, this opens up the pathway into the phase one, two clinical studies. Now, personally, I have to admit, I'm a little bit less excited about Beam 101 because there are other companies such as CRISPR Therapeutics, which are far further ahead in the race for treatment for these diseases and also achieve the uh, treatment through the induction of fetal hemoglobin. And I had also previously covered Bluebird Bio on my channel. And as you can see, their treatments for beta thalassemia as well as sickle cell disease are both in phase three clinical trial. And due to the fact that the first one with a successful commercialized treatment to market is most likely going to enjoy orphan drug protection, meaning market exclusivity for many years to come, I am personally not entirely sure why Beam still focuses very so much on what I would describe as a Me Too treatment in terms of inducing fetal hemoglobin. I'd much rather see them focus all of their efforts on Beam 102, which should be the true treatment because of their ability to correct the base pair that actually is not correct and causes the sickle cell disease uh, trait. But again, that's just my personal opinion. Overall, though, it is fantastic to see that Beam Therapeutics definitely do make strides to enter into the clinic because this surely is the only way that they make, in the end, any money through bringing those treatments to market. And also, this is how we as investors stand to make our returns for believing in the company and having invested early. If you have learned anything new, if I have opened your eyes to a potentially interesting investment uh, opportunity, or if I have reconfirmed your investment opportunity and you enjoyed this content, please do leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you're not already.